Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here's your latest integral of the day. We have the indefinite integral of x times e to the x over the square root of 1 plus e to the x dx. So pause the video if you're going to try it on your own first. I'm going to jump right in and make a substitution. I'm going to let t equal the square root of 1 plus e to the x. And then I need to figure out what dx is in terms of this new variable, but let's go ahead and square both sides first so it's not a hot mess. So t squared equals 1 plus e to the x. And then now let's differentiate. So 2t dt is equal to e to the x dx. So let's see, is everything accounted for? So e to the x dx in the numerator, all of that's going to be 2t dt. And then down here, the square root of 1 plus e to the x, that's t but I still have this pesky little x over here. So what to do, we're just gonna come back right to this line and we're going to solve for x in terms of t. So I'm gonna subtract one, that way e to the x equals t squared minus one, and then taking the natural log of both sides, we get x equals natural log t squared minus one. So now we're gonna have a natural log in our integral. Hmm, interesting, okay. So up top, that x is now natural log t squared minus 1. e to the x dx is 2t dt. And then in the denominator, square root of 1 plus e to the x is t. Oh, this looks lovely. Those t's cancel out immediately. And then now let me take the 2 outside the integral. And I want you to observe ln of t squared minus 1 is ln of t plus 1 times t minus 1. And I'm going to use this fact along with my logarithm properties to break it up so I can evaluate the integral. So remember, when the argument of our logarithm is a product, we can break it up into the sum of two logarithms. So we have 2 integral natural log t plus 1 plus natural log t minus 1 dt. Now from here, you could break off and do integration by parts twice, once for each of the logarithms, but I want you to just observe a pattern and maybe bypass all of that to save yourself some time. So if you'll recall, how do we evaluate antiderivative of natural log of x dx? Well, it's done by parts. We let u be natural log of x, and then dv is just the differential dx. So du would be 1 over x dx, and then v would be very good x. And then what we're left with is x ln of x minus integral product of v du just gives me 1 dx. So then this is just x natural log of x minus x plus c. And if I'm being honest, some of my students just memorize this because it comes up so often and they don't want to fuss with having to do integration by parts every single time. So here's the thing I want you to observe. When we have natural log of t plus 1, you would proceed the same way. This would be t plus 1. This would be dt. You'd get back a t. You'd have 1 over t. Nothing would really change because when we do the chain rule, the derivative of t plus 1 is just 1. So you can kind of follow this little pattern here, replacing all of the x's with the argument for each of the logarithms respectively and get the antiderivative without having to redo all the work step by step. Okay, if that makes no sense, then just do it off to the side for both of them. But I think that most of you who watch these videos are pretty confident and advanced in your integration techniques. So let's just jump to the final step of taking antiderivatives for the problem and then it's just a cleanup game from here on out. So we've got the two sitting out there still and then now I'm going to have t plus 1 ln t plus 1 minus t plus 1. Got it? Yes, okay. t plus 1 ln t plus 1 minus parentheses t plus 1 plus and then same thing it's just all the arguments are now t minus 1 so then we have t minus 1, ln t minus 1, minus the quantity t minus 1, plus c. Okay, now we just have a lot of cleaning up to do. So I'm going to distribute t plus 1 here, distribute t minus 1, and distribute the negatives. 
the final answer will clean up quite nicely. I'm gonna keep the two out there for now. So this would be t natural log t plus one plus one times natural log t plus one minus t minus one plus t natural log t minus one minus natural log t minus one minus t plus one plus c. All right, please observe the ones cancel. Woohoo! What else can we do? Well, both of these natural logs have a t in front of them. I can factor the t out and then I can write it as natural log of t plus one plus natural log t minus one. Do you feel a log property coming soon? Yes, I do too. You know what, those shouldn't be brackets. That looks peculiar. Let's go back to parentheses land. Okay, also, also observe these two guys. I can just write them as the quotient of a single logarithm. So I'll have plus natural log t plus one over t minus one. And then who was unaccounted for? Ah, just the little minus t and another minus t. So minus 2t and then plus c. Good? Okay, now from here, you betcha, we're going to combine these as well into a single logarithm, multiply the argument. So then we've got 2t times natural log t squared minus 1 plus natural log t plus 1 over t minus 1. Uh, minus 2t plus c. And then now we need to go back to the original variable, which was t. So recall our substitution was that t was the square root of 1 plus e to the x. And then that means t squared is just 1 plus e to the x. So here we go. This is going to be 2 times square root 1 plus e to the x. Natural log of t squared is 1 plus e to the x. And then we have minus 1 plus natural log square root 1 plus e to the x plus 1 over square root 1 plus e to the x minus 1 plus 2 square root 1 plus e to the x plus c. Okay, do you see? We can clean up quite a bit more. The 1's cancel. Then you just have natural log of e to the x, which is x. Ooh, so 2 x times the square root of 1 plus e to the x. Let me put this guy in the front with him because notice I can factor out 1 plus e to the, uh, the square root of 1 plus e to the x, should I choose? Or you could leave it like this. And then ln of the rest. Okay, so pretty much now it's as cleaned up as can be. I was, I was debating, ooh, should I, you know, rationalize the denominator and the logarithm? Could I play around with the exponents? I don't know if it's going to really clean it up much. Someone try it and tell me if it was satisfying or not. And then I think we're pretty much done. What else would you like to do? We could certainly factor out th this square root of 1 plus e to the x, and then maybe just distribute that 2 that's outside. So what would it look like? I would just have it be... You know what? Oh my God, have you been yelling at me? That that minus somehow became a plus. What in the world? Heavens to Betsy. Okay, so you could write this as 2 times x minus 2 times the square root of 1 plus e to the x. And then, yeah, let's distribute the 2 to the last term as well. Plus 2 natural log square root 1 plus e to the x plus 1 over square root 1 plus e to the x minus 1 plus c. That's good. I like it. Voila. Okay. Comment down below if you cleaned up more. How did you solve it? Did you do something different? I suppose you could just go for it by parts right away as well, right? Without making the substitution. That should certainly work. Anyways, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Math with Professor V. And if you need to review any integration techniques or prep for your calculus or other math classes, differential equations, trig, pre-calc, stats, I have full-length video lectures organized into playlists on my YouTube channel there to help you. And I will be back sooner than later. Bye.